Vladimir Putin escalating Russia's invasion of Ukraine today, along with announcing the partial mobilization of 300,000 reservists. Putin made clear, he made clear references to his potential use of nuclear weapons. This is not a bluff. The citizens of Russia can be sure that the territorial integrity of our homeland, our independence and freedom will be ensured. I emphasize this again with all the means at our disposal. And those who try to blackmail us with nuclear weapons should know that the prevailing winds can turn in their direction. And President Biden condemning those comments hours later in his speech at the UN General Assembly. This war is about extinguishing Ukraine's right to exist as a state, plain and simple, and Ukraine's right to exist as a people. Whoever you are, wherever you live, whatever you believe, that should not, that should make your blood run cold. A nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. Let's bring in now CNN military analyst, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. Thank you for joining us, General. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Um, so, so Putin good once again you, raising the specter of nuclear weapons. It's never good when, when you know the use of nuclear weapons is implied. But do you see this as just a hollow rhetoric that he's doing, he's spewing here, or is this a real threat? There, there's a lot of people that are saying that, Don. But you can't look at nuclear, the potential use of nuclear weapons as a hollow threat when a nation has those. You have to consider it a threat. Uh, and that's what Putin is doing, and he's done it repeatedly. So as much as many people would like to say, oh, he hasn't used them so far, or he's never going to use it, or he's too afraid to use it, if there's even a 1% chance that he might use it, you have to take those kind of threats seriously. And I think the president today at the UN uh, hit a couple of key points in his speech, and one of them was certainly uh, holding Russia accountable and signaling them uh, about the use of nuclear weapons and, and, and how it is unacceptable and how Russia walked away from nuclear nonproliferation talks uh, earlier in, their, in, in, the, in the UN debates. Let's talk about this uh, partial mobilization, General. You have background on how Russian soldiers are trained, and, and you say that this mobilization is jaw-dropping, but not for the reason people might think it is jaw-dropping. Explain. Yeah, I think uh, immediately the number of 300,000 mobilized comes to everybody's mind, and it's shocking, uh, Don. But when you know the intricacies of taking reservists and taking them out of their civilian environment and suddenly turning them into soldiers very quickly, that's a very difficult thing to do when you have that many, especially with the shape that Russia is in right now. The first thing it, to consider is, where do you process those individuals? How do you get them from their civilian lives into a soldier's life? How do you give them uniforms, weapons, get them retrained? Uh, get them integrated into units. And the units that they're integrating into have been devastated on the battlefield. So the morale is already low. So you're affecting not only the military in a very negative way by trying to insert individuals who haven't trained or, or been a part of a unit since the start of this war, but you're also ta uh, talking about affecting the civilian society. And boy, aren't we certainly seeing that tonight with the amount of protests that are going on all over Russia. Uh, and, and this is one thing that I don't think Putin really considered, the, the blowback from the mothers and the citizens, mm -hmm. and especially from the young men that didn't want to go. Yeah, I think you talked about that early on, and as we were covering the war, you and other experts said that this was, you know, once you start affecting mothers and their kids don't come back or what have you, it was going to... Um, the tides may, may turn when it comes to public sentiment about what's happening in the war. What does it say about how effective Russia's military will be if it is, if it's conscripting people, it's getting conscripts, um, and those are the people who were, you know, were protesting? Don, I, I can only say that this will not contribute to success. Uh, so far, the Russian military in the first three phases of this operations have been exceedingly unsuccessful because they have untrained soldiers, very poor leaders, uh, terrible equipment, and a dysfunctional supply, as well as a horrible command and control architecture. So you have now have an army on the battlefield 
that has been mauled over a period of over 210 days. Morale is low, leadership is in the toilet, and now you're gonna say, hey, we're going to put new people into these units. Well, having been on the battlefield uh, in units that are not in good shape and trying to introduce the, the raw recruits, even though these individuals may have been in the Russian military before, they're going to be raw recruits if they eventually report to the front lines. They are not well accepted because they have not fought with the teams that are there. The morale of the teams that are there are, is already poor. So it's just, it's just uh, laying on another layer of disastrous activity. And you know, Don, what I'd say is most people who don't understand the military think that these human beings are interchangeable, that soldiers can just fall into line and suddenly contribute to the actions of the Russian military. You can't uh, because of all the things I've stated. And I'm sorry for going on like this, mm -hmm. but it's just phenomenal that anyone in the Russian government would think mobilizing 300,000 people in the midst of a war would help the situation. It just won't. Oh, you didn't go on. Perfectly explained. Thank you, General. I appreciate it. Thanks so much.